Hey, what's up, everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and next month we're going to be hosting another CAD vs. CAD tournament. So today I'm going to try to speed run the three qualifying models that are required for entry into this tournament. Now, to qualify for this tournament is totally free, and you can qualify using any 3D CAD system, and you can be running from anywhere in the world. So if you are a 3D CAD wizard, or if you know somebody who's a 3D CAD speed demon, be sure to send them a copy of this video. Let's get them registered for free for the upcoming CAD vs. CAD tournament. All right, here we go. Here's my qualifying run. I'm going to go to tutaltoby.com tournaments 2025 variety CAD edition tournament. This is the tournament we're hosting next month, the summer open tournament. And click here for the 2025 open tournament drawings. And I'm going to attempt to model this part and come up with the correct mass, this part and come up with the correct mass, and this part here and come up with the correct mass. So I'm going to take these three drawings and just move them over to my second screen here. Move this one over, move this one over, and move this one over. Make sure you'll notice here that these drawings have the correct mass. So make sure when you're doing your run that, you know, you show the correct mass on screen. If you're not getting the correct answer, then your run is not going to qualify. So make sure that you get that correct. Now I'm going to say compete. And here's the clock. We got to make sure that this clock is shown on the screen while we are doing our speed run. And here is on shape. This is where I'm going to model the parts. So we're going to get started here by clicking go in three, two, one, go. The clock is on the screen. The CAD system is on the screen. Let's get into it here. I'll just call this tourney run. Save some time here. I'm not having to name each of them uh, based on the drawing and my default unit is millimeters so i'm going to jump into this first model here and for this first model i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to start out by kind of drawing this geometry here this model does have a little bit of a weird spot here where this uh, little fin kind of sticks out but we'll figure that out at the end so i'm going to do a front plane begin a sketch orient my view i'm going to s key begin a rectangle and i'm going to use auto dimensions here to dimension that rectangle at 77 by 38. Then I'm going to use some auto dimensions to draw a line here that comes up to a height of 19 and then comes over to a distance of 20 and then over to a distance of 40. And what that does is it gives me the geometry for the slot and for the counter bore. So for the slot, what I'll do is I'll click on this and I'll go into my uh, slot command. So I'll just search for slot here and I'll take that line and uh, offset that. Uh, whoops, slot. Yeah, take that line and I'm going to offset that line to a width of 24 and then I'm going to click in the background for the green check mark and then I can click on that line again and make the second slide here to a width of 12. And so then uh, for the final geometry that I'm going to create here, I'm going to create just a triangle up top for that kind of rib shape and that triangle is going to have a height of 70. Wow, already 90 seconds in. We got to go a little faster here. So extrude, I'll hit the space bar here, and I'm just going to extrude this region and this region out to a depth of 50. And then I'm going to show that sketch, and I'm going to take this region here and extrude that out to a depth of 15. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this region here, and I'm going to extrude that region out to a depth using remove out to a depth of 7. But obviously that counter sink or that counter bore for that slot, it's not going to be located on that face. So let me choose this option here for starting offset entity and I'll pick this face here. And there we go. Now I get that nice slot counter sink or counter bore. I keep saying counter sink. Uh, and then we'll go top plane, begin a sketch. You know, when you make your video, you don't have to talk through your video. I'm just doing this uh, so that some of the on shape users kind of know what my workflow is and maybe they can use that, but you don't have to talk at all. You could be totally silent during your video and that's, that's fine. You'll still qualify. As long as the clock is shown, and as long as you show that you're getting the correct mass for each model, that's really what matters the most. So make sure that the clock is on screen. Make sure that you're showing that you are getting the correct mass. And then we're going to take that shape and we're going to extrude that out to our height of 70. And then we'll finish up here with a hole. So we'll jump into the hole tool. Uh, my screen's a little bit shrunk, so not all my tools are showing. Counter bore metric. And this one is going to be uh, 22. Tab, tab, tab. 37. Tab, 6. And then for the location, I'll just use the mate connector here and get that mate connector off of that circular edge. There we go. And that looks good. Now, if I go into the mass properties, so let's go over here, part one, right click, assign material, 
And then I'm going to go into my material here from the Too Tall Toby materials library of ABS. If I go into the mass properties, you'll see that the answer is not correct. So the, the mass properties that I'm coming up with here, so mass properties right here, is 306.3. It's supposed to be 306.8. You can see it right here on the sample drawing. So what's wrong is that I never filled in that little gap there. Well, the nice thing is in Onshape, we can launch a delete face command. And when we launch delete face, we can just pick that face there. And look at that. Onshape just takes care of patching that up for me. And now I am ready to... Sorry, I keep getting those notifications. Let me silence them. Now I'm ready to uh, uh, re-measure that mass. So measure that mass and... 306.8. Yes, that's what we want. Four minutes. All right, here we go. Next model. So I'm going to do a new part studio here. This one is going to be a sheet metal model. I think for this one, what I'll probably do is I'll probably start by creating this shape and extruding it to this depth here. And then I'll create this shape as a secondary sketch. And that'll be what's called a tab. And then all that'll be left is just to flange this over, add my cuts and add my fillets. So I think that should work out as a pretty good workflow. 756 is the mass that we are looking for on that one. So let's start out with some auto dimensioning here. It's gonna be 60, this is gonna be 35. And once we've got that in, in place, we can finish that sketch, jump into sheet metal mode, extrude this and this. It's gonna go to a depth of, well, that dimension's not on the sheet. So 146 minus 40, minus eight, minus eight. I think it's about 90, right? Uh, so make sure that's going the correct direction. Make sure your sheet metal is going in the correct direction and make sure that you're using six tab tab six for your thickness and inside bend radius. Boom. Now we can pick this face here and uh, begin a new sketch. Press the N key to get normal two and we'll create a line that comes over here to a depth of 40 plus eight plus eight and then a line that comes up here to a height of 170. Remember, auto dimensioning is a massive time saver in 3D CAD. So figure out what your 3D CAD system does for auto dimensioning and use it. It will save you so much time. So now the only thing left here is what is the height from here to here? And I think that height to the point of tangency is 24. And then what is the width of this section? And that is 440. Boom. We're done with that one. And that's gonna be a sheet metal command called a tab. So tab here that will add that material to the sheet metal part so it can be flattened. Now for the flange here, this gets a little bit tricky because when you click on that edge and you choose flange, Onshape by default wants to bring out the entire flange. So that should come out to a depth of 85, but it wants to do that entire edge. Well, we just wanna do a partial flange. However, the partial flange by default, you can see here it's coming off of this top point. So we can choose to flip sides for that partial edge. So now it's coming off of this bottom point. But the thing is our offset dimension here you see it says 24 if i make that 40 that offset dimension is coming from that lower edge and we really need this to be 55 from this upper edge here so in on shape what you do there is you say you want the end condition for the partial edge or the partial flange to be up to entity with offset and then you click on this point here and now you'll see that i've got 25 35 45 it's all coming off of that edge so that's supposed to be 55 relative to that edge the other thing we need to do is set our flange position and we really want the flange position to start here and then that's where the bend begins so that is going to be a hold line flange in on shape so i think that looks pretty good but just as a quick kind of sanity check i'm going to pick these two faces here and then just look down here in the status area and confirm that the distance is 85. so i didn't have to do anything special just pick one face pick the other face and then look down here in the status area 85 and that is the desired dimension so now i just need to start adding in some of that slot geometry and for the slot geometry here what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the line trick again like we did in the last model so 27.5, I'm going to come over here like so, and then I'll just kind of come out here into space and I'll click on that edge and then I'll create a slot from that edge or from that line. That slot is going to be 30 in width. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll add in a dimension that comes from this location to the center of that slot. That dimension is 49. So now I've got that slot in place, I can do a remove and I only really need to remove this down far enough that it's going beyond that bend. So I'll just make it go down to 20. That should be fine. And what that does is it sets me up to create the slot that's on this side of the part using line, 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 come back, touch the end point, arc, 
And then I can just hold my mouse over this point here to get horizontal and vertical to give myself an almost fully constrained sketch in one pass. The only thing I really need here is a dimension, and that dimension is 27. And look at that, nice and fully constrained. So extrude, remove, remove that geometry there too. Oh yeah, that looks good. And then finally, we're going to create a slot here using some of the tricks we've already been using. The one thing you want to be careful of is don't pick up on midpoint here. So it's almost better to just single click out here in space and then let go of your mouse and then type in what that distance should be 13 enter move your mouse up this way single click 15 enter move your mouse up this way single click 62 enter and then we can click on that line and do a slot and that slot is going to have a width of 12 enter enter and now s key extrude remove hit the green check mark and now the final thing we need to do is just add those fillets so we go into our sheet metal tools and we do what's called a corner break and this could be either a chamfer or a fillet it's going to be a fillet this time with a radius of 12 and there's going to be seven places and with a corner break all you need to do is pick on these vertex that are at the corners here which makes it a lot easier especially when you're zoomed out as opposed to having to zoom in and pick that vertical edge so i think that looks pretty good i think we got everything let's see if we got the mask correct right click assign material that material is going to be from the ttt custom material it's going to be plain carbon steel hit the green check mark and then mass property click on the part here and 756 and oh yeah that is correct that's what's on the drawing here so let's click here when finished and move on to our final model and that was five minutes and 30 seconds wow so this final model here is in inches and i think for this model what i'll do is i'll draw half the model and then I will add the, the cuts here and then add the hole and then mirror everything. So I just wanted to kind of share my game plan with you, even though it took, uh, you know, 18 seconds. So we're going to create a new part studio here. This part is in inches and pounds. So we're going to go into the hamburger menu here and say workspace units and just change this to inches and change this to pounds. We're already 32 seconds in. We got to make up some time here. Front plane S key, begin a sketch N key, get normal to single click here on the origin and come up to a height of two inches. Come over here to a distance of 1.5 inches because it's half the model. Come back down here to horizontal, come over, come up here to a distance of 0 0.75. Come over this way, come up. This one's going to be to six inches. So really this could be like 5.25. Uh, factoring in that 0.75 here we can pick up on a vertical relationship uh, to that original edge to save us having to add in that extra dimension and then finally we can come over here and like so whoops looks like this line is not vertical click on the line press v there we go that's what we wanted we want that line to be black uh, this dimension here is also going to be 0.75 so uniform wall thickness and this distance here is going to be 12 over 2 since we're only doing half the model and uh, this distance here is going to be 0 0.75 uniform wall thickness. Nice fully defined sketch so we can do S key extrude, tab, 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 three, tab, 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 space, gives us a nice mid plane extrusion to three inches. Now we can pick on this face here, draw a line, start right there at the midpoint, and then click on that line and do a slot command. And this slot is gonna have a width of one inch. And then the distance from the center point of this slot to this mid plane here is gonna be nine over two, since we're only doing half the model. S key extrude, this is gonna be a remove, and we can make this through all. There we go. And now this face here, begin a sketch, uh, get normal two. We could start out here with a circle. So we could draw a circle here with a diameter of one inch. And then that circle has a distance from the uh, top plane. Sometimes I like to mentioning from the planes, 4.75. And then we're gonna create an arc here that also kind of runs across the top. This arc and this line here are gonna be tangent. So you press T. This point and this point here are gonna be horizontal. So you press H. And then we go dimension here from this line or this point down here to the bottom, uh, 5.125. And there we go, S key extrude. And this is gonna be a remove through all. And I'm also gonna pick this region and this region. So I don't have to do that in two separate features. So that gives us that hole and that kind of curved area. And now we can do S key chamfer, or you could choose the chamfer command up here. That chamfer is gonna have a distance of 0 0.125 and 45 degrees. And then you could pick these two edges or you could just pick this face. I like to just pick that face and that gets both of those chamfers in one shot. And so now the final thing is we've got a fillet here with a radius of 0 0.5. And then we also have a fillet on these edges here with a radius of 0 0.5. So you may as well just get all of them at one time and save yourself some time. So we hit the check mark and now we're gonna do a mirror of that entire part. 
So we come out here to mirror. This is the entire part here. We click in this box, it says mirror plane, and we pick this face here, hit the green check mark, and now we can assign some material. And that material is going to be from the TTT custom materials, aluminum 1060 this time, aluminum 1060. And we're gonna click the mass properties, click on the mass here, 4.44, and that is what we're looking for. So click here when finished. And oh yeah, not a bad time, not a bad time at all. So 13 minutes and 10 seconds, there you go. There is an on-shape speed run, kind of uh, laying down the, uh, or setting the pace for this speed modeling tournament. If you think you can model it faster than those 13 minutes, then you definitely have a chance to qualify for this tournament. Remember, you can model using any 3D CAD system. You could even enter more than once modeling with different 3D CAD systems. So I hope you enjoyed this video, this tutorial, this speed run. If you did, be sure to hit the like button on this video be sure to subscribe to the channel and most importantly if you know somebody who is a 3d cad speed wizard be sure to send them a copy of this video and say hey you think you can model these parts faster because if you can you can make a recording of your speed run and qualify for our upcoming cad vs cad tournament